What's good, everybody out there on YouTube? This is your man Shadow Stick dropping some odd Faraga on this mic. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, Sonic Frontiers. Actually, I'm really excited about this game, but I do have a few concerns. Uh, is it directly tied to the game itself or the gameplay or the world writing, blah, blah, blah? You'll find out. But overall, I've been super hyped for Sonic Frontiers. It's one of those games that really when described as like the dream sonic game open world sonic game big environments yada 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 so on and so forth now i will say this i am a bit worried about it being open world mostly because open world games can either go one way they can go the breath of the wild route where they're one of the greatest games ever created and this amazing masterpiece of a game you know games that fit in that are like you know breath of the wild horizon zero dawn you know, gta 5 these just games that really you know break the pace for the gaming industry and really set up what a video game should be at its you know fullest capacity but then we have games like you know far cry or assassin's creed just the the ubisoft formula where these games you know rely on really just padding out the game with a bunch of meaningless things and it winds up ultimately becoming a boring and tedious experience overall and that's what worries me about Sonic Frontiers, which route is it gonna take? Now, I have no doubt that this game is probably gonna at least wind up being decent because hopefully we have good movement for Sonic and you know, a good story. Based off things that Izuka and others have said like that are involved with the game, it's gonna be a really good experience. Seems like Tyson Hess is involved with this game, which is always a great thing. And according to this Tales Channel article that we have here, Ian Flynn is the writer for this game. So one of the things that I want to talk about is, first of all, we didn't really get any gameplay. We got a lot of screenshots of the game and we got, you know, in that trailer, some views of the game, like the game world, how the game world will look. And I will say it looks absolutely stunning. I don't know what version of the game that was running there. It could be the Switch. I highly doubt it's the Switch. If it is, they've worked some miracles. They've summoned some Sega, some Sega demons from hell to make that game work. It could be the PS4 version, PS5, Xbox Series version, Xbox One, PC. We don't know yet. And I'm curious to see what version they're actually using in the promotional material. But based off of leaks, we knew it was gonna be open world. This is back when it was called Sonic Rangers. There was this big boss thing at the end of the trailer. So I'm wondering how often we have to beat this boss would there be other bosses in the world like this, these massive Shadow of the Colossus style bosses. And we also heard that there's gonna be a shrine system akin to like Breath of the Wild. But instead of it being, you know, mini puzzles or mini dungeons, they're gonna be like full fledged levels that you see in like an adventure game or a boost game. So I really wanna see where they take this game in terms of overall direction. Because I don't think necessarily having a completely open world Sonic game was gonna work. Mostly because in a Sonic game, one of the main factors that keeps you going is direction. You have to have a motivation, you have to have an end goal. Now, I, I'm not gonna say that, you know, I was worried that, oh, they weren't gonna put like objectives across the map. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'd like to see those traditional stages alongside the open world because one of my biggest issues with official games and fan games that use hub worlds or open worlds is there's not really much to do in those worlds a lot of the big open world open level design sonic fan games just feel like i'm jumping to whatever is just the straight line that i need to go it never really feels like a challenge to get to an upper or lower path I mean, I think the greatest example of this is like Green Hills Paradise. There's no reason for me to take any other pass. I just go fast. Sonic shoots down and he goes up. His momentum sends him somewhere. And that's really it. And I know Green Hills Paradise is, you know, outdated, but that's just one of the big examples I can pull off the top of my head. I mean, even Sonic fan games like Sonic GT, which I think is actually really fun because I like the movement and I like some of the level design concepts, just feels too open. So when I go somewhere, there's no real reason for me to go to the upper, lower, and middle pass that they've set up because it's too big and it's too easy for me to get to all of them. Mostly because they want it to feel open and they want me to feel like I have a choice, but there's no benefit of taking any of them because i can shoot past all three but overall i'm super excited to see what they do with an open world sonic game i mean i think gameplay wise they're probably going to take the adventure style route and maybe combine it with because i feel like they still want sonic to get places quickly and you know relatively speaking the boost games are relatively faster 
than the adventure games. Not to say that the adventure games are slow. Just speaking fact, you know, spitting some hot paraga on the mic. But I will say this, Morio Kishimoto, who's the director of like Sonic Colors, Sonic Forces, and Sonic Lost World is working on this game. And while I think Sonic Colors is an amazing game in and of itself, Lost World was a little bit disappointing, even though I liked the game. And that's mostly because it had this really big difficulty spike and it just really felt like nothing new, even though they had a lot of new concepts and ideas in that game. And then Sonic Forces was just mid, it was a really rushed product. And that was obvious from the state that the game was in. So I'm wondering what Kishimoto can do on this next project. Also, considering we have Ian Flynn working on the games, I'm extremely excited. If you haven't read the IDW Sonic comics or any of his works before, like I think he's also worked on the Archie comic, he is a phenomenal writer for the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. He really understands what the franchise is about. He actually loves the games and loves the, the storytelling. And he's someone I've really wanted to work on the games for a while. And the fact that he's also working on the script and they've actually, I think they got the guy who worked on the adventure games also uh, to work on the script I, and, and the, you know, the story. I think this is going to be a really great experience. I will say though, I do love the Breath of the Wild moment that they had in the trailer. I don't know if that was planned, but the Breath of the Wild moment in every single open world game since Breath of the Wild has come out. It, it's, it's like, I, I get, I get like, I get like this, this little bit of nostalgia because I was really excited for that game. So I'm really excited to see Sonic take that approach with his next game. But considering we'll be talking about the writing, I've been wondering, are we going to see other characters in the game? Because from what it's been described to be, there's not going to be really many, if any, other characters in the game. But in the trailer specifically, there was this girl talking to Sonic. Now, I couldn't really tell in the English trailer who it was, but according to the Japanese trailer, because it had subtitles over it, it says Amy and it says Sonic over here. And then it's confirmed by the Japanese VA of Amy that, you know, that was her in the trailer, which are one of the Sonic VAs. I think that's actually Sonic's VA, but it's confirmed to be you know, Amy in the trailer, which makes me extremely happy because I want to see the other characters in the Sonic universe be involved in the story. I don't necessarily need them to be playable, but it's one of these things where Sonic will introduce characters. And now because of the way the games have been designed and the stories have been written, they don't really involve those other characters. And I can't blame them because one of the biggest criticisms from all these gaming outlets has been Sonic's annoying friends, which I've never understood why they hated Son the other Sonic characters. It just never makes sense to me. That's another thing I'm worried about. It's like, are the gaming outlets and the gaming journalists gonna be really like, I guess, accepting of this game? We know that IGN hates Sonic. I wouldn't say necessarily hate Sonic, but they have not been really, you know, receptive to Sonic in the past. And over the past decade or so, they've been, you know, slandering Sonic games, whether they've been good or bad. And while we've gotten some, you know, places here and there where they haven't really slandered a Sonic game, they've made it a really big prerogative of theirs to just bring up the worst than Sonic, even when there's something positive. And I mean, IGN's not the only gaming outlet that does that. A lot of them do that but they're the big one. And, you know, I, I'm not going to let this bother me, especially considering, you know, Izuka himself is like extremely excited for the game, it seems. He says, Sonic Frontiers is a huge leap forward for the franchise, delivering an involved gameplay experience that can be enjoyed by longtime Sonic fans and action adventure enthusiasts alike, says Takashi Izuka, creator, uh, creative officer at Sonic Team USA. And it it makes me excited that Izuka's excited for the game because he's the guy who basically is who, who has the reins for the Sonic franchise at the moment. And when you see the guy who's the head excited, you, you get excited. But I don't know. How do you feel about Sonic Frontiers? Are you worried? Are you concerned? Are you excited for the game? I will say this. I've been seeing too much of the we need to see gameplay. You can't be excited yet. You'll be let down like forces. And I'm just like, bro, people just being excited for the game. is this is not a problem. That's how, you know, video game cycles, period work. You know, if you want to be pessimistic or you want to be cautious, that's fine. I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm not telling people to not be excited for the game. Let them do them. This has been man. Shattuck stick. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Remember, Hot Faraga turns to Kobuzaka. Make sure you chill out some of my other videos. Have a good one.